Hey, what's going on? It's Shihan Chowdhury, AKA Chili Pepper Cooks, and I'm here with Taste Made and Holland House. And today we're gonna to be making a easy, creamy chicken. And we're gonna be using Holland House white cooking wine. Now, I love this product because it has bold, sophisticated flavors, and it really turns up your regular weeknight meals, and it levels it up to the next level. And it's very easy to use, and I'm going to show you how you can incorporate this wine into an easy meal for your weeknight's dinner. And um, on top of that, I'm going to show you the process and the breakdown of even the seasoning that I use. And at the end, you'll see that um, it's going to be a very uh, appetizing looking dish because you got to remember, you eat with your eyes first. So we're gonna get started. And the first thing that we did was we marinated our chicken, okay? Now this chicken that we marinated is chicken breast that's cut into half pieces. And it's cut into half pieces and we put in some oil in here. And then we just did a regular uh, Italian seasoning and some seasoning salt. With the seasoning, you can keep it very simple and you can use your over-the-counter uh, seasoning uh, blends that you can get have access to. Um, it, there's no specific type of seasoning you need to do for here. So first we're gonna uh, fire up our uh, a stove. And we're gonna be on medium heat uh, for this. And what we wanna do is we're gonna put in a little bit of oil first, and we're gonna primarily cook with butter. But the reason we're gonna put in the oil first is so that the butter doesn't burn. It'll actually uh, help the butter from burning. Again, this is a very rich, creamy chicken. Uh, so you're gonna see a lot of different uh, dairy products get used. So I put in about two tablespoons of oil right in here. And while that's heating up, I'm going to get some butter and I'm gonna probably use uh, about three tablespoons to start off with. Um, you can start off with less and add more uh, as you go. So we're gonna start off with that amount and I'm just gonna get this pan a little bit hotter to start with. And we're gonna melt this down. Now, uh, one thing I do wanna say is as soon as this is melted, we're gonna put in our um, shallots. Now, these are minced shallots. This is about a half a cup of uh, minced shallots. And uh, essentially, you can use more if you want. Um, um, but I really don't recommend you use less than, than a half a cup. Shallots is really gonna help you know, add in that you know, special depth of flavor you know, that we're looking for, uh, that we want. Um, so the butter goes in, as the butter is melting, again, we're gonna start off with the chicken first. And we're gonna put this chicken in here. Once the chicken is cooked, we're gonna do about five minutes each side. Once the chicken is cooked, we're gonna take the chicken and we're gonna put the chicken to the side. And then we're going to uh, cook everything else and then we're going to deglaze the pan. And again, we're going to use this to deglaze the pan. Uh, white cooking wine, specifically Holland House white cooking wine, you're going to see how well it's going to deglaze the pan uh, along with our chicken stock that we're going to have. Um, we got Hannah that's in, that's tuning in right now. We got Royce, what's going on Royce, that's tuning in right now. I'll stand a little back, you know, just in case. <laughs> It wants to spit at me. Okay, so here we go. We're first gonna put in our chicken breast. Again, these are chicken breasts that's cut in half. Now what that allows is that allows for even cooking and faster cooking. So we're gonna put that right in there. Boom. And second piece. And our third piece. And then our fourth piece, just like that. Now we're gonna crank up the heat just a little bit because that's four pieces of chicken that's been in here. Also keep in mind about this. Um, with the chicken, you wanna leave outside for at least one hour. Um, I kept it out a little longer, but I usually keep it out for an hour and a half to two hours. Can't recommend that, <laughs> CDC standards. But 
keep it up for at least one hour. And, uh, and that allows, again, for more even cooking uh, with the chicken and allows it to cook faster. Um, because, you know, there's times where when you're cooking chicken and essentially the middle part is not cooked and the outside is cooked, it's because you probably just took your chicken right out the fridge and started cooking it. Leave it out on the counter for at least one hour. Uh, Catherine says, you were just looking for recipes using shallots. Well, here you go. Uh, there's a lot of recipes you can do with shallots. Um, uh, and this is uh, a really good recipe, especially if you're looking for a creamy uh, dish. So we're just going to uh, build the crust on this chicken uh, over here. So as I look down over here, um, you can see the crust is starting to build. And again, I'm not that type of person where I keep flipping my chicken up and down, you know. Um, I, I usually don't do that with specifically with a lot of my meats, unless there's a specific cooking technique for it, uh, specifically if you're cooking a kebab or something. But when it comes to uh, something like this, uh, or steak, or, or, or um, any other chicken pieces, leave it alone. <laughs> Let it cook on one side, fully through, then flip it. You don't need to keep uh, flipping it back and forth. Um, I'm kind of scared of cooking chicken. I never know when it's done. So Abby, um, that used to be my fear when I first started. So much so, I wish I had it here, so much so that I've always had a thermometer around. And here's the thing, keep a, keep a, keep a meat thermometer around. There's nothing wrong with having a, uh, a meat thermometer. And use that meat thermometer to, to gauge it. Uh, obviously, if the chicken is cooked when it reaches 165, so around 100 degrees, give it that flip. Um, that way, you know, you can get that uh, a wall cooking. Chicken is one of these things is you don't want to overcook and obviously you don't want to undercook. So chicken is uh, one of those things where you do have to time it properly. And, you know, Gordon Ramsay, he said that, and a lot of other chefs, he said that when he goes to restaurants, he doesn't order chicken. And one of the reasons why he doesn't order chicken is because the restaurants usually overcook it, and they overcook it obviously for health reasons, but having it at 165 degrees is the, the, the best way you can get the juiciest chicken. Now you can hear the sizzling uh, going uh, really hard in, and wow, look at that crust um, that's being formed. We're going to keep it in probably for about another 30 seconds, um, let the crust form just a little bit more. Uh, for about 30, 30 more seconds. As you can see, um, uh, the, the chicken is being halfway cooked right over here. You can see the, the cookedness is creeping up. For those that are just joining in, I'm creating a creamy garlic chicken and I'm using Holland House white cooking wine to do this. And you're going to see the, the method that I used to do this. Now, it's time to flip the chicken. Does marinating help cook chicken? Marinating does help cook chicken. In fact, wow, uh, look at that crust right over here. In fact, there's a, there's a hack video that I made with Case Made in Holland House. Uh, it's three hacks. And the three hacks are three different marinades. And you should see that video on the Taste Made Makers platform. And in that video, I explain, and I'm actually going to turn this down. <laughs> these, these burners get hot really quick. And in that video, I explain how uh, uh, using marinades, specifically Holland House red cooking wine, actually tenderizes the meat. So um, be on the lookout for that video on the Taste Made Makers platform. Um, I go over against three easy marinades that I, w I went over. Um, and the hacks will be live next week. So be on the lookout next week and you'll see those hacks um, uh, that I came up with. And that person asking about using shallots and cooking. In the hacks, I'm not going to get too much away, but in the hacks, I do use shallots. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, at what point do you test, test your temperature? Uh, about now, I would, you know, uh, uh, you know, stick my meat thermometer in and I would, you know, check the temperature for this. I'm very seasoned in this. Uh, means I've been doing this for a while. So I just kind of know when it's almost done. Um, 
just by looking at it, you can look at the chicken and you can see when it starts bending uh, right over here. You see these bends that are starting to occur. You'll see that the chicken starts to shrink. So it's actually shrunken uh, about by, you know, 20%. And that's how it's about done. So right now, this chicken, uh, it's, it's, it's about done. It, 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 it cooks for, um, you know, almost uh, 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 eight minutes. Uh, with this type of chicken, especially if you keep it out in room temperature for at least an hour, these are going to cook very fast. Um, especially if you stick it in the you know, toaster oven, you stick it in the air fryer. It cooks in about 12 to 15 minutes. It cooks very fast. Right now we're going to take this off because later on we're going to put the chicken back in. But um, if I was the first one to say, this is, this is done. Top three seasonings to put on chicken. Cumin. Onion, uh, granulated onion powder, granulated garlic powder, of course salt as well. Um, if you do those four mixes, salt, cumin, on, uh, granulated onion, granulated garlic, you can get a, a, a chicken that tastes similar to uh, the chicken and papa. Um, okay, so we have our chicken that's been done over here. Now, we still have the bits and the seasonings from the chicken that's right over here. I'm going to turn down the heat just a tad bit, a little bit more, uh, because now we're going to go in with the shallots. Okay, again, I'm using half a cup. You can use more. Um, I would probably use more if I had more. <laughs> but we're going in with a half a cup of uh, shallots right over there. At this time, you can add more butter if you need to. I do not need to add in more butter. Uh, because I still have it from the, the cook. Now, you might be looking at this pan and you're like, oh, that's burnt over here. This is burnt. This is not burnt. These, this is going to be the flavor that's going to get picked up uh, with the white cooking wine and uh, um, uh, the chicken stock. Uh, Roy says, do you recommend high heat to get a crust on your chicken like that? Or can I use lower heat? That's a very good question. Um, you can use higher heat, like if you have a cast iron pan, um, you can definitely use a very high heat to get a crust uh, like that. And then you can just finish it off in the oven. That's another technique um, to, to do. Uh, but yeah, you can definitely use uh, higher heat uh, 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 for that. Just keep in mind that, you know, if you're not putting it into the oven, you're going to have to turn down the heat to, to the chicken cooks properly. But at low heat, if you don't play with your chicken, meaning if you don't keep flipping up and down, you're gonna get that crust. Put the chicken down, walk away. Trust me, don't play with your chicken. Um, or don't play with uh, any of the meats that you put in here. So right now we're just looking for the uh, shallots to get translucent, which is translucent right now. Since it's translucent right now, we're gonna add in our uh, garlic. This is our minced garlic. I'm a garlic guy. To be honest with you guys, I will probably add more garlic than you're seeing in there. Uh, this is about you know one fourth cup. Um, or about two tablespoons. Honestly, I would add more garlic because I'm a garlic guy. But you know, for this uh, <laughs> for this demonstration, I didn't want to do that because you know I want to be a little bit more practical. Um, not saying that adding more garlic isn't practical. Uh, but we got the garlic in here, and we're gonna wait for the garlic to get toasted a little. Now, at this point, you want to be on low heat. For sure, you want to be on low heat, and you want to let the garlic toast on low heat. You do not want this to be on high heat at all because it will, trust me, it will burn the garlic. And you do not want that. So we're just looking for the garlic to change color. Get a little brown. And um, again, for this one, uh, I do like to constantly stir and it just helps the garlic to rotate around uh, evenly. Um, Cindy, I see you came in late. It's okay, we forgive you. <laughs> we forgive you, Sydney. But today we're cooking a creamy garlic chicken, um, and we're using Holland House white cooking wine to do it. And you just made it in time um, because now we're going to actually use, we're going to pop open the white cooking wine uh, as this uh, garlic gets toasted. Lauren, Garlic Girl was the sixth spice girl. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, Spice Girl, I remember that uh, that came out when I was like a lot younger. I'm 33 years old. I think I was like 10 or something. 10 or 12. Um, 
So right now we're gonna crack open uh, the Holland House white cooking wine. Again, I love this white wine because of its bold, sophisticated flavors. It turns your regular weeknight dinner into something spectacular and it levels it up. And if you have guests over, it's one of the ways to impress them. Um, I have one third uh, uh, chicken stock over here. I'm gonna add half a cup of white cooking wine with the chicken stock together. Uh, so I'm just gonna measure it out. And we're gonna add that right in there. Okay, so about half a cup right there. Now we're just gonna wait a little bit more for that, probably about 20 more seconds. Um, if you can see right over here, it's getting nice and brown, nice and toasted. That's what we want. We want that toasted flavor. Roy says, I bet that smells amazing. There's there's no other better smell than garlic, butter, and shallots put together. It smells amazing. Um, and it'll actually stick up your whole house in a good way. <laughs> so here we go. Now we're going to put in this uh, Holland House white cooking wine with the chicken stock. We're going to put that right in. And we're going to let this reduce a little. So we're going to actually turn up the heat just a little bit right now. Uh, I was on low heat. We're going to go back to being on medium heat. And we're going to let this, once once it starts simmering, we're going to let it simmer for at least uh, a, a good five minutes. Uh, you know, let it do its thing, uh, let it simmer. Now, for the next steps um, as uh, uh, that we're going to get into is we have our Italian seasoning, and we're going to add just a little bit more of the Italian seasoning once this starts getting in into its simmer stage. So once it gets to the simmer stage, I'll just turn up the heat just a little bit more. Um, once it gets to the simmer stage, we'll put it in. Uh, Nate asks, is the order you add ingredients important to this part? Somewhat. The order that I did it in, yes. You need to add the shallots first before you add the garlic, because the shallots take longer to cook than the garlic. Um, and then, uh, you know, then goes to the uh, cooking wine along with the, uh, uh, the, the chicken stock. And then once this gets simmering, which you see right now, it's starting to simmer. Now is the time that we're gonna add in our um, uh, Italian seasoning. We have about uh, one teaspoon uh, of it that we're gonna add in here. Uh, so as you can see, it's simmering. And we're gonna add a little bit of that. We're going to stir that in. And again, we're going to let about, so now that it started simmering, we're going to give it about five minutes. And we're going to let that reduce. We're going to let that keep simmering. And we're going to let that reduce down properly. Could you use red cooking wine for this? Um, for a creamy uh, dish like this, I do not recommend the red cooking wine. Um, but if you know how to, if you want to know how to use the red cooking wine, next week there's going to be three hacks that I did, three marinades that I used Holland House red cooking wine with, um, and it's a, it's an overnight marinade process, and I show you how to use red cooking wine to achieve that. And there's three different marinades that I did. You can use it on steak, chicken, fish, um, uh, lamb, uh, any one of those meats. Royce. Can you use this one for a quick uh, uh, flambe? Uh, um, yes, you can, but I, I, I won't be doing it. Uh, I, I'm not an expert in um, in the little flame that that that, that occurs <laughs> when using these wines. It's actually the alcohol that does it. Um, uh, but <laughs> I won't be doing it. But you know what? I want to see you do it one day. Um, maybe you can teach me how to do it. Um, <laughs> But it, it, it would be great if I could do it all here. It, it, now, doing that does add another depth of flavor uh, when you do actually you know, flambe the, the, the alcohol that's in there. So right now it's reducing. I'm just making sure that it reduces. And um, we're at maximum heat anyway. Yep. And as you can see now, remember what I said earlier that, oh, it looks burnt. Remember, we are like, oh, the pan kind of looks burnt not burnt, it's flavor. And I said that the Holland House uh, 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 white cooking wine will do its job and deglaze the pan. Watch this. 
Watch the pen. I have the pen over here. I'm going to go like this. Do you see any black spots? No. It's fully white. Look at that. Fully white. The pen is fully white because it's been deglazed properly. This is what you want. Does it need to boil or just simmer? Uh, it just needs to simmer. A little bit high simmer. Um, uh, uh, you know, I, I would say just like this, how it's uh, simmering right now. Not like where it's like super hot. Uh, but yeah, just give it a high simmer, I would say, instead of a low simmer. And we're just reducing it down. So probably give it about two more minutes uh, once it's reduced down. Then we're going to add in our, um, our uh, uh, heavy cream that we have in here. Now, there's one thing that we do in Bangladesh, okay, where we taste our food as we go along and, and do this. So right now we're going to do this. The way we do it in Bangladesh is we get a little piece of, of, the, of the gravy from the pan, right? And we blow on it. Blow on it to cool it down a little. Then what we do is we stick our hand out, our palm, we stick our palm out, and then we put it on our palm, okay? Then we just literally lick our palm. Tastes absolutely amazing. I mean, the the, the flavors that uh, the Holland White Cooking House brings in uh, to this dish is just absolutely amazing. Now, let's get back to our pan. Our pan is getting nice and brown. We want this brown color that we're seeing right now. And on top of that, you can see it has reduced by a lot. You see how much it reduced by? It's barely, uh, when I go like this, you can still see the white uh, to it because that's reduced down a lot. We're going to turn down the heat before we add in our uh, whipping cream. You can still see the pan is still white. You see? All that burnt pieces, it's not burnt pieces, it's just flavor. It got deglazed properly. Okay? Now, there isn't much liquid over here, so we're going to get ready to put in our um, uh, whipping cream or our heavy cream. We have about half a cup of the heavy cream. Um, you can use uh, more or less. Um, now, I do want to say that this does take some patience, but it's a very simple recipe. It just takes some patience, but look, it can be done in under 30 minutes, right? So we're going to put in our cream. Look at that. Look at that. You add in that cream, and now that color starts changing properly. Look at that. We're going to turn down the heat all the way down. And now we're going to be on absolute low heat. Absolute low heat. Look at that creaminess right over here. That cooking wine did some magic, Royce. Exactly, Royce. That cooking wine. Definitely did some magic. Now is the time um, that we are going to put back in our chicken. But before we do that, here's a little <laughs> chef secret. <laughs> We're going to put in uh, a tablespoon of butter. <laughs> just to give it that extra creaminess, just to give it that extra depth of flavor. We're going to add in that t uh, t um, a tablespoon of butter. We're going to let that properly melt, uh, melt in there. And uh, you know, that's, a, that's a little chef's secret that, uh, that you might not know about. In your favorite restaurants, definitely do this. <laughs> um, again, it's, it's a nice weeknight meal, okay? So you know, adding a little butter is not going to kill you. <laughs> Lauren says, these classes are so helpful for a visual learner. Thanks, Tasteman and Hollinghouse. I definitely agree. I'm a visual learner myself. Look at that creaminess. Look at that. Just look how creaminess of this. And obviously that butter definitely added a whole other layer of texture. We're going to taste this now. So we have it in the back of the spoon. And I'm just going to grab it here and I'm going to taste it. <laughs> that is absolutely amazing. I mean, look, you know, you got the flavors from the white cooking wine and the deglazed process it did uh, 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 to the pan picked up additional flavors and you're getting all those flavors at once with the creaminess from the cream. Amazing. 
Now we're going to add in our um, chicken right in. Now I want to show you something. There's some chicken juice right over here okay? that's from the plate. Don't throw that away. Make sure you get the chicken juice in. That's additional flavor. Do not let flavors go away. All right. So now that we got the chicken in there, all we're going to do now is we're going to flip it. Make sure the chicken is nice and coated, right? Just like that. We're going to coat all the chicken in there. Just like that. Okay? Guess what? It's done. Just like that, it's done. Catherine says, what do you serve this with? A couple of things you can serve this with. If you're on more of a uh, carb-watching diet, um, uh, you can literally just have this with some vegetables, some roasted vegetables. Um, if you're South Asian like me, <laughs> you can have it with some rice, uh, specifically some rice that's been cooked in um, uh, uh, some water, it's been cooked in some broth. You can have it with that. You know, these two are some great options, have them with some potato, broccoli, the classic. Salted or unsalted butter, doesn't matter. Great question. I always use unsalted butter. I have this issue of always accidentally over-salting. It's easier to put in salt than to take away salt. It's very hard to take away salt. So you can always use uh, flaky salt, um, unless you're Royce. <laughs> you guys will get that joke if you know it's easier to make. Um, you can always uh, add a, a flaky salt if um, uh, you know it's not salted enough. And flaky salt is really good because it adds more depth and you know texture to it. Any suggestions for good leftovers with this recipe? Again, the best leftovers is probably you have you know leftover pasta, leftover rice, you know leftover uh, uh, vegetables. Very easy uh, to do this though. So right now this is completely done. We're gonna get in our plating process. Okay. Now. For plating process, um, I'm going to move this over just a little bit, and then it is hot. So I'm going to move it to the side. Move this right over here. I'm going to take this, move this out the way. All right. We're going to get our plate. We have a red plate for the holiday theme. We put a plate right down over here. We're gonna get a piece of chicken. Now actually, before we get a piece of chicken, we're gonna do a first layer with some of that cream. So what I'm gonna do, and I'll show you this on camera, is I pick up some cream uh, from that pan, and we're just gonna put that cream right down here. And we're just gonna make sure that cream can be seen. Seeps through. So when you do, take a bite of your chicken. Get a bite from there. Next, we're going to take our chicken breast. And we're going to put our chicken breast right down there. Okay. Now, garnishing this, this is my way of garnishing it. And it adds a little extra flavor. We're going to add in some. Uh, actually, before I garnish it, I'm actually going to get some more cream. Now, here's what I like about this. This cream has all the garlic and it has the shallots. So it's very, very good. It's very, it has, it's just not a gravy that's being put in. It has texture to it. So we're just going to put some more cream right on the chicken itself. Okay. Next, we got... Our cilantro, this is what we're gonna uh, garnish it with. And cilantro will add additional flavor to it. Um, if you're one of those people where cilantro tastes like soap, uh, <laughs> you can omit the cilantro. Now, um, on top of this, we're gonna add in, again, you don't have to do this, this is optional. But this takes your chicken to a whole new level. We're gonna add in, uh, we're gonna grate some Parmesan, some fresh Parmesan. Don't get the pre-grated one. Grate it yourself. It has a different uh, uh, layers of flavor to it. 
So we're going to add in our karma job. Um, I'll just not wait for someone to say stop. Someone on the chat say stop. You want me to stop. <laughs> I'm going to keep grading until somebody says stop. <laughs> you know, they, 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 they do have the uh, Olive Garden. Get a little bit more than that. You guys want me to keep going? No one, no one says, okay, someone says, <laughs> who is it? Hannah? <laughs> Hannah said, don't ever stop. <laughs> someone says, stop the madness. <laughs> okay, all right, so we got, I'm sorry, I just have to get a little bit more in here. Uh, <laughs> we got our Parmesan that's in there. You would think that this is complete, right? You would think that everything is good to go. In fact, this is complete, however, you know who I am. And you know that we cannot forget about the Thai chili pepper. Now, I got some Thai chili pepper pre-cut in here. And I'm going to sprinkle that on top. You don't have to do this, but I like to add a little spice to it. You can add jalapeno if you don't have Thai chili pepper. Or you can add habanero pepper if you don't have it. But this is how the dish now looks like. That looks absolutely amazing. Look at that. Now... It's the main time where we're going to taste it. So let me get, grab my fork and my uh, 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 a knife. I should have a knife over here. Let me just grab my fork and we'll taste it. All right. I got my trusty fork. And I got my knife over here. We're going to cut that in. And I wish you could see this on cat camera, but this is a juicy piece of chicken. I don't know how much you can see it on camera, but this is a juicy piece of chicken. Look at all that juice that just poured down my finger. Look at that. You see my finger? <laughs> that is a juicy piece of, like right when I squeezed it, all that juice came out. This is simply amazing. All right, now we're gonna actually taste it. Royce says, the way you layered the flavor in this dish is amazing. Thank you, Royce. No Thai chili peppers for me. <laughs> I'm with baby spice. Thai chili peppers uh, 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 spice range is actually like, I would say a 6 out of 10. It's actually slightly below uh, uh, jalapeno, to be honest. Especially when you get those jalapenos that are like super uh, spicy. All right, here we go. I'm going to cut this up a little bit more. My mouth is going to stuff. And now we're going to taste. We're going to dip it into some of that, uh, uh, that gravy. Um, that sauce that we just made, we have it right over here. Speechless. That is amazing. I mean, from the from the sauce that we made, slash gravy, it has so much depth uh, to it because of the Holland House white cooking wine um, that's been added that we've reduced down, concentrated the flavors even more. And the Holland House white cooking wine, it balanced out the creaminess that we put in there with the heavy cream and the butter. And then, you know, we did our, um, a nice seasoning on the chicken and we did a nice crust on the chicken. And on top of that, the cilantro really balances out and adds a new flavor to it. Parmesan cheese take it to the next level. The Thai chili pepper adds to that spice that we're always looking for. This is absolutely amazing. As you can see, this is a very, very easy dish to make. Do it in under 30 minutes. You literally take your weeknights to the next level. If you have a guest coming in, you can literally wow them with this. They would never believe that you did this at home in less than 30 minutes. Um, this was absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, Tastemade. Thank you so much, Holland House. It's been a great experience. I'm so glad I got to use this product. And, you know, hopefully there's going to be more of these videos that you're going to be able to see. And don't forget, next week um, on the Tastemade Makers uh, uh, platform, you're going to see all of this video. You're going to see the three hacks that's in there. And um, I'm going to catch you there. My name is Shion Chowdhury, a.k.a. Chili Pepper Cooks. Thank you so much for tuning in.